we'll start by thinking about what we mean by the term big data. It's a popular term and it's widely used in the media, but it can mean different things to different people. There's really not any agreed upon definition. So I'm going to talk about some of the characteristics of big data and what they mean. If you've worked with data before, you might be saying, what's the big deal? So we now have lots more data, but haven't we been managing and analyzing data in different forms for a long time? How is big data different? In many ways, big data is not different. A lot of the same principles and methods for working with data still apply. What has changed is the sheer quantity and complexity of the data available and our ability to connect it together. Data has also become an integral part of our everyday lives, with many more of our daily living being recorded either actively, for example through social media, or passively, for example through mobile phone data. Our definition of big data needs to capture this changing role of data, as well as the scale and complexity of working with it and, if possible, to cut through some of the hype. So how big is this data, really? It's big, right? Big can mean different things to different people. Big data is often said to mean data bigger than can be processed routinely with conventional computers. But the challenges of working with big data are not just technological. So big data doesn't have to be huge. It can be complex and challenging to work with, given the technology, people, skills and resources that are available to you. Data that is big for one organisation could be small for another. So in terms of its size, we're taking quite a broad definition of big data. There isn't a single set definition of big data, but there are some common characteristics that can help us to understand what we mean by the term. These are the five V's. Volume, variety, velocity, veracity, and value. Firstly, volume. Volume means how massive amounts of data are collected and stored. Big data is large. It's unprecedented in scale and scope, but there isn't a precise definition for how big big data has to be. In the emerging field of data science, the data that is collected and analysed is so large that storage itself can be a challenge, never mind processing and working with the data. But in practice, in many other disciplines and organisations, the sorts of storage challenges uh, aren't just because the data is, is large, um, but also because of its complexity um, and how it has to be accessed and how it has to be secured. But even more traditional social survey data sets can contain information on hundreds of thousands of individuals, particularly where that data has been gathered over time. And while that data is big to an extent, uh, in terms of large numbers of people, it's also big in terms of being wide, having lots of different variables. And so the analysis and the structure of that data uh, can still be quite challenging. But it's not so big that it can't be analysed with conventional desktop computers. Variety represents the different types of information that can be held as big data. And we mean variety in two different ways. So firstly, big data can contain large amounts of different types of information about each individual in the data set. So there's a variety of information. But secondly, there are more different types and different sources of big data available than there were before. For example, social media data, such as tweets or Facebook, um, healthcare data, uh, video content, and data captured from wearable devices. Variety can also apply to the different structures of the data that data held in big data sets doesn't necessarily have the uh, more standard database structure that more traditional data sets could have. Velocity represents the speed at which big data is generated and can be analysed. Technological advances mean that uh, a number of data sets are generated in, in real time uh, and potentially can be analysed in real time. 
Much of this data is generated by the increase in digital devices that we all carry, phones and tablets and, and so on, that are generating data about our activity and our movements in, in real time. Organizations such as Facebook and Google use data science to analyze this data in real time in order to, to, to make decisions and, and serve content live in response to the data that is being generated. In practice, many organizations aren't going to collect or want to react to data at quite that speed. But velocity still represents the fact that there is an increased demand for intelligence generated quickly from the data that an organization has. And so there is still pressure to generate information uh, quickly about recent activity, even if it's not up to the minute real time. Veracity refers to the fact that the data hasn't been collected for research purposes. It's data generated from undertaking an activity or from real-time measurement of, of some movement or some, some phenomenon, or from the administrative records created by an organization as they carry out their work. This means that uh, the data can be generated in different ways, that it may have uh, errors or, or mistakes or duplicates, uh, abbreviations, uh, and it's own way of being coded and, and, and organized that isn't exactly how uh, we might want to work with it as a, as a researcher or as an analyst. But on the other hand, data generated in this way may well be more complete. It may cover the whole of a, a, a population, all the service users that an organization works with, for example, rather than just the sample generated from a, from a survey. And so some would argue that the large quantity of this data can make up for some of the issues in quality or, or accuracy or of how the data has been collected. The fifth V, value, is added to the previous four Vs as the justification for working with big data in the first place. There has to be something in it for the, for the organization. And so value is the value of the intelligence that's generated from being able to analyze the data that you hold from your organization and perhaps linked with other data sources. It might be that you want to be able to demonstrate the impact of your work to show to funders. Or it may be that you want to analyze where and how your services are being delivered in order to improve the design and delivery of services in the future. But there has to be something at the end of the day. We're not just analyzing data for data's sake. The five Vs help us to think about the characteristics of big data. But it's also helpful to think about the types of data that we might include within that term. And we can think of broadly three types of data. There's human sourced information coming directly from individuals. Traditional business systems, the sort of administrative records and databases held and maintained by organizations in the course of their work. And there's machine generated data, like the positioning of mobile phones. And these are all examples of large unstructured data sets that are quite different from the conventional uh, databases with records that we may be used to working with. Examples of machine generated data include satellite images, weather data, maps and so on, scientific data collected from uh, natural phenomena such as earthquakes or the state of the atmosphere, and photographs and video collected from CCTV or traffic monitors that tell us something about activity in the world. Human generated uh, data could include uh, the textual data, essays, reports, doctor's notes, um, open fields in a, in a database, or social media activity, connections between people and what they're, they're posting on social media. And then more broadly, web website content, which could include text, video and, and images, uh, and could be data about a, a service or an organization. Increasingly under the banner of big data, we also have access to structured data in the form of administrative data generated by organizations. And these can often be information about individuals. For example, health records, hospital admissions, education records, qualifications, income and pension records, organizational data uh, about uh, employers or, or about charities, and internal data 
about service users held by an organization providing a service to people, uh, about the characteristics of the individuals that they work with. And these are all examples of structured data collected for the purposes of uh, conducting the business of an organization or providing a service, but which can usefully be used for research and analysis. But big data isn't all advantages, and there are significant challenges in preparing data for analysis. These challenges have always been around, but they're particularly pronounced when we have a large data sets to work with. You need to understand the structure of data, how variables are coded, how accurate the information is, what data is missing, and what the different terms and values in the data mean. If databases are large, then you might bump up against some of the limits of storage and processing power uh, that, your, that your organization has access to. And you also, particularly when you start linking data sets, need to think carefully about issues of pri privacy, confidentiality, and anonymity, and how these affect the subjects of the data that you hold. In our project, we're taking a broad view of big data. We include the increasing opportunities to make better use of organizational data and the benefits of linkages with external data. Our focus on data skills is to help enable you to make better use of the data that is becoming available. So this involves understanding the data that your organization generates, large and small, structured and unstructured, and how it might be used. Data can be big as a result of combining or linkage with external data sources, even if the core data that you start with isn't that big. And this linkage might be at the individual, at the organizational, or at geographic level. Lastly, we're focusing on the value of big data, understanding the potential and the limitations of the insights that better use of your organization's data can provide, whether it's understanding the distribution of your work or trying to capture impact.